Hello everyone and welcome to the UAMO Chess Academy. I am International Master Alexander Bogdan Banzia here today showing you some some game about the calculation part of the game because uh, of course you learn the opening then uh, you are going through a middle game and then yeah you probably outplayed your opponent somehow and you have to finish the game so how do you actually finish your game you have to use your calculation to 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 score the the point basically to get that uh, that win on the score sheet you cannot really win a game simply by playing the opening and yeah so yeah this this game that we've got today was played in the grand catch chess classic in uh, Karlsruhe in baden baden germany it's between uh, two very very interesting players it was played between uh, Nidic Arkady which is uh, yeah originally from Germany so this is already a bit of a psychological uh, battle because uh, Nidic being the, the German coach for some time was very familiar with uh, Keimer Vincent, which is a 16-year-old junior rated 2500 who won the, the Grand Key Open uh, last year and is a very, very prom promising uh, youth player. So yeah, I also had the, the pleasure to face him over the board in one game. He definitely played a very strong game and uh, won against me. So I can tell you from my personal experience that he is a very well prepared player theoretically speaking so yeah before we, we jump right into the actual game make sure to subscribe to the remote chess academy channel guys because it's a really educational chess channel in my opinion so make sure to also drop a like and a comment to, to this video after you you watch the whole thing so Nidic played one e4 which is his main move Nidic is a very very aggressive player, he's uh, mainly playing e4 and uh, plays the Rui Lopez and very aggressive lines in general, just uh, going for kingside attacks. And uh, Vincent went for c5, he's uh, playing the, the Nidorf usually. But uh, yeah, Nidic knew, knew Vincent very well as, uh, as I said before and he tried knight c3, he was not interesting in the seeing what uh, Vincent knows in the Nidorf because the Nidorf is one of the the most solid openings out there and uh, it's really hard to get uh, get the game going from the Nidorf and then he hit, yeah he just uh, stick to the closed Sicilian which is not that big of a theoretical debate but it's more about uh, plans and strategical ideas that you you have to know so all, so yeah, Nidic is very aggressive, but the game starts a bit slow, but then he's preparing a, a, a nice attack. So Vincent plays a6. The main idea of this move is that after knight f3, you can play d6, and after d4, you can transpose to the Nidorf. So that's the point of a6. And on knight g2, e2, he played d6, as you can see already. Uh, Vincent is fine with the transposition to the Nidorf, but uh, yeah, Nidic had other ideas, played a4, which is actually not that common, but then uh, yeah, we'll just transpose to the main stuff, and on knight f6 uh, you could actually still play d4 and get a Nidorf Sicilian, but yeah, it's just a uh, normal Nidorf, so Nidic just went for the closed Sicilian setup with g3. And uh, Vincent played knight c6, bishop g2, and he chose the e6 setup. You can also play with g6, that's also something uh, very popular, which I've done myself a couple of times. What? Why we play something like d3, castle, h3, and then black is usually trying to switch to some, uh, some uh, queen side play while you yeah, are trying to attack him. So something very, very normal would, would have been something like that. Bishop e3, b4, and then knight b1. So that's a topical, topical position of the close Sicilian. Black's attacking on the, on the queen side, and white is going for the king side. But okay, Vincent uh, 
chose the e6 setup, which is a bit different, we'll see. White castle, bishop e7, he played f4. Um, maybe he could still have played d4, because knight h has been played the g3 knight dwarf before. But yeah, he was not interested in that because uh, a4 is not always played and yeah, he just wanted to go for f4 and kingside aggressiveness. Castles by black and d3. Rook b8, h3. Everything uh, very standard so far. Knight to d7. He's trying to reroute his knight and uh, prepare b5 because b5 it's worth noticing that would allow e5 because you attack the knight and then uh, <coughs> also the c6 knight is uh, under pressure so this is already very good for white so he plays knight d7 in order to prepare b5 and here knight h plays g4 which uh, vincent is answering with h6 which i don't think it's the best uh, the best move from a practical standpoint because h6 is, um, it might be a very, very ugly weakness that white can, can use. For example, Agard uh, used to call this in his books uh, to be a hook, because at some point you can maybe play h4 and g5 and get to the, the king much faster if uh, the pawn was on h7. For example, you have to play h5, g5, g6, and still it's not that clear. So h6, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. I can understand that it's um, it can work, but I think it's really hard to play in, a, in an actual game. So knight h1 for the very normal looking knight g3. That's usually the, the, the plan when you play with knight g2. Sometimes you can play f4 and knight f3 directly, but yeah, when you play with knight g2, the idea is to get the knight to g3. Also, the king is not feeling... Uh, unsafe and the knight might might be quite annoying from some something like h5 for example so here vincent plays bishop h4 trying to yeah attack the knight and also stop a bit white's initiative on the king side and after knight c2 he plays b5 going for some count play king h2 b4 bishop to e3 a5 and we have a queen to d2 here everything very standard now white is uh, is preparing to maybe play g5 maybe play f5 the the whole point is that uh, black will try some activity on the on the queen side as i said before and white is just going to, to also you know get his rook ready for the attack and uh, yeah basically you can see that uh, every every piece of white is concentrating to to the king side so vincent plays bishop is a6 uh, already threatening to play c4 and create some counter play and uh, yeah, Arkady is uh, ready for that and meets it would be 3 After which Vincent played queen e7, very normal so far. Rook g1 preparing uh, preparing to, to launch an attack on the g file later. Here Vincent plays uh, rook b to c8 because the, the rook from b8 was uh, quite pointless now that the pawn was fixed on b4. So now he will... Uh, try to focus to deliver the c pawn pawn lever in in the future he's, if he can get c4 in good conditions then uh, he might be even better because uh, yeah if white is not uh, getting a real attack going then uh, he might get uh, might get uh, yeah just uh, pushed on the on the queen side and the c file might might be quite uh, dangerous so yeah if the c file opens that that can be just a game over for white so rook uh, a f1 preparing you know the attack uh, the rook can be useful on the f file later in the game so here vincent plays the move g6 that uh, again i am not sure if it's it's the best the best move that you should play here but okay it's it's really smart if you play it correctly again uh, this g6 and h6 move I don't think are bad, but you have to yeah follow follow up them uh, in the right way. So actually, if you try f5 here, I believe the point was to play g5 by Vincent, and then uh, you get the nice e5 square and the bishops quite nicely blocking the the attack. So Nidich here tried e5, which is basically 
an improved version of f5 so e5 is a very very interesting pawn sacrifice that uh, you have to be real really well prepared against because if if this works then uh, your position might uh, might just get get very close to collapsing pretty soon because the the idea of e5 is uh, de let's say you accept the pawn sack with de and now white's not going to recapture that would not be great uh, I, I believe maybe just g5 here is, is good and then the e5 pawn is is going to to fall so on uh, on d5 white has a very strong uh, thematical reply he just plays f5 this is very 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 well known and uh, it's uh, very usually seen in the benoni that when you have the pawn center and play e5 d5 f5 is usually just very bad for black the difference is that this uh, this bishop's not uh, blocked on g7 and is on h4 and is a bit more active. And uh, here black could have tried g5. And uh, okay, this is not that bad, but still it gives white the h5 square and after something like knight d4 f6, uh, attacking the queen and getting the pawn closer to the king, uh, black has to play queen to d8 and... Uh, yeah, white has to get rid of the h4 bishop because he's uh, restricting his pieces and uh, plays bishop to f2 bishop has to take because if you're allowed to take on h4 then h6 you're just getting mated so he takes rook takes and now uh, i believe uh, this position is quite complicated uh, if you if you play the best way with black the best engine moves but i think this should be just uh, much easier to play with white because uh, you can maybe play bishop e4 but also you have the very simple plan of going uh, knight g3 knight e4 and second g5 and then just mate or you can also play simply h4 and uh, chip away black's uh, queen side so i believe this is uh, this is yeah practically much easier to play for white so in general i advise you when you prepare for a game just uh, yeah f try to find position that suit your style and uh, you shouldn't really care about the engine evaluation that much if it's equal or it's slightly better because even if the position is equal on the engine if you are very very well uh, prepared for the plans and strategical ideas and you find that position very easy to play and you don't have to spend a lot of time then it's it might be much much uh, much more useful than a slight slight advantage on the engine but you you are pretty confused at the board so yeah this 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 idea with d5 and f5 you you have to to learn from this game this is a very very typical and thematical idea so keep that in mind if you are planning to go for this kind of uh, yeah the close Sicilian type of positions the advantage of playing like this with white is, is that blacks got only two or three setups this one with e6 and also the fianchetto that i showed you or maybe you can try at some point combine fianchetto with e5 but that's a bit risky and not that to use not that uh, frequently played but okay e5 and now black played d5 being aware of that and on f5 uh, here vincent uh, came up with uh, the greedy knight c takes on e5 which uh, yeah was uh, quite a big mistake because yeah here uh, as i said g6 and h6 are not bad moves but here he could he should have found the g5 move which might be, seem really ugly but is actually the way to go in this position and is leading to very complicated play after something like knight h5 uh, now you take the pawn the big difference is that white's not no longer available to take on h6 and after something like bishop f2 rook takes f2 white might get in some some f6 or knight g3 with h4 uh, yeah this is very complicated positions the engines are not really helping because um, yeah engine is always crazy about material so if you'll just give the engine a pawn it's going to scream advantage but yeah i think in this case between two human players this was a very playable position for white and very interesting one and yeah, Vincent should have gone for this because what happened in the game was just um, 
getting out of control after knight c5 white just took on h6 he's threatening to take the exchange after rook e8 uh, fg6 uh, fg6 uh, fg6 is forced uh, if you try to take with knight the knight h5 and g5 is coming so this was already much better for white so fg6 and here knight h came up with the g5 move which was a very strong one and uh, here uh, vincent played uh, yeah again a small inaccuracy he played knight f7 bishop g3 was better to get rid of the the bishop and after knight f7 white uh, white could have tried a very very interesting uh, exchange sacrifice in this position he could have played rook takes f7 and uh, queen takes rook f1 and then just go for compensation with h4 because after a move such as queen d6 let's say uh, pinning down the knight on g3 you just go h5 g h5 g6 and let's say why not just take the knight with h4 white is going to simply sacrifice it and after something like queen e7 rook f7 is just uh, winning the queen because uh, if queen d8 queen h6 mates so after you win the queen is just a uh, game over because the uh, black's king is so exposed something like queen f7 g takes king takes and then uh, some some queen move to like uh, f4 and then you know queen d6 get get an get uh, to the spawns and yeah just uh, starting to collect some stuff so bishop g3 should have been tried but still white had had some interesting ideas but he played knight f7 after which uh, knightish came up with some some brilliant play he played queen f4 and now bishop g3 was not so great because uh, yeah white simply can take back with the knight or also with the queen with knight f4 ideas so he took on h6 but the point was now that uh, he actually took the bishop not the knight and black's got two options if knight f5 now you can try to pause the video and see you can just take on f5 with the rook and something like gf5 simply knight f5 and takes bishop d5 is is just uh, taking the queen because king g7 is going to run into queen h6 mate so knight f7 now now it comes the the calculation part here what what do you guys want to play you have uh, an easier move than knight is played but it's quite hard to figure out during the game that knight f4 queen g5 and you exchange queens and this is actually winning but apparently black skin doesn't really have any moves and bishop d5 seems to be a huge threat with yeah some some ideas to play for the mate without queens so this is not how humans play but humans go for for romantic attacks just go for uh, for sacrifices as knightish did he played knight h5 going for for full attacking mode the threat is to play knight f6 and then just mate so after gh5 he came up with a brilliant move again you can try to guess it to post the video he went for rook f6 and the the idea is basically just a uh, uh, queen h5 and or rook g6 queen h5 and this is just uh, yeah black uh, black is getting a bit uh, offside with the spaces the bishop they are not helping and white's got a lot of pieces on the king side and he had to take if you play something like knight f8 uh, the calculation process should be something like um, queen takes h5 and uh, after he goes knight h8 uh, okay he's trying to get rid of g6 but knight f4 simply comes in with knight d5 ideas bishop b7 protecting it and now you just play play simple positional chess even though you are a piece down white is black is completely tied down to defense just rook f1 queen g7 h4 and yeah bishop h3 is coming uh, black is going to drop material eventually and on knight h7 just knight e6 and gf6 is simply winning material after something like uh, queen to h7 and queen to g4 check and if if queen g6 for example then you can at least take the queen and play f7 and collect the rook uh, and on knight g6 yeah just f7 and take the queen with queen f5 should be just uh, completely winning then something like knight f e5 then simply knight f4 attacking e6 knight f8 now you just collect the h5 pawn bishop b7 rook e1 attacking the knight and after knight e d7 can even take on a6 but just rook h6 queen g7 knight g6 is really strong and knight h7 just h4 preparing bishop h3 
So c4, just knight f4, attacking e6, and knight f8, simply bc4, and black is simply simply losing, even though he's a knight up at the moment, he is almost in Tsuzwang, so so here is a really really important tip guys when you are attacking uh, don't be desperate to see until the mate if black's got no moves then it doesn't really matter if you have like two pawns for the piece <coughs> you are just going to collect start collecting at some point and yeah the rest of the game went knight f6 gf6 uh, queen d6 knight f4 king f8 uh, and here knight ditch could have actually played a very interest interesting move bishop takes d5 he played queen g3 in the game, but uh, bishop d5 with the point at ed5, rook g8 is just a quick mate after queen g3. This is a very well-known pattern. The magnet sacrifice on g8 and the queens comes with the mate on g7. But okay, he played queen g3, it's still completely winning. And uh, after rook to d8, again, he had the same thing with bishop d5 and queen g8 was a threat. So maybe he was scared in a time trouble that this shouldn't be that easily winning because black's got rook and two pieces for the queen but after queen e4 yeah black should collapse pretty soon and he played the the more easier rook e1 and after e5 uh, he just played knight g6 king e8 and knight takes e5 with queen g8 being a uh, mating threat and uh, vince tried queen f6 but after knight g4 he is at least winning the queen but after queen e7 just knight f6 with uh, with mate to follow after king f8 queen g8 so yeah, definitely take take from this game that uh, when you are attacking, you you shouldn't uh, be desperate to checkmate or get your material back immediately. You should just uh, yeah, if Black has to place his pieces really really badly in order to survive, then two pawns for the piece or sometimes even one pawn can can be enough compensation. And then at some point you will take more more material eventually. So just. Uh, if you feel like the sacrifice is working, then just just go for it. Don't uh, don't uh, yeah try to calculate everything because uh, yeah you might not be able to end. Yeah, you know just just use your intuition and uh, yeah do what you feel is best. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed this this attacking game by by Nightditch. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next videos. So goodbye.